Thank you for watching the American Numismatic Society's YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like our online resources, publication, and events, you can support the Society by becoming a member. And don't forget to check out our book and eBay stores. The links are below. Hello, I'm Dr. Jesse Kraft, Assistant Curator of American Numismatics at the American Numismatic Society. Today I'm going to be talking about the 1804 dollar, very rare coin. In 1804, the United States Mint in Philadelphia struck 19,570 coins. This example, however, is not one of them. Interestingly, the story of the 1804 dollar doesn't begin until 1832, when a man named Edmund Roberts, a commercial sailor from Portsmouth, New Hampshire, became diplomat for the United States government to the Middle East and Asia. On his ship, the USS Peacock, he made trade deals with various empires in the region, most notably the Omani Empire, Muscat, and Siam. By 1833, he had created the earliest diplomatic relations with this part of the world. How does this relate to the 1804 dollar, however? During these early excursions, Roberts brought gifts with him. However, he wasn't pleased with the gifts. He considered them cheap and was often embarrassed by them. In 1834, the following year, he was tapped to go back to this region, but he demanded that he bring better gifts with him, uh, in particular groups of coins. He wanted to bring coins with him. Now this request made its way all the way up to the President of the United States, President Jackson at the time, who demanded that the Mint make, quote, duplicate specimens of each kind now in use, whether gold, silver, or copper, end quote. And these coins would be taken by Roberts to this part of the world and be given as diplomatic gifts. However, this request confused Mint officials. This proved problematic for two denominations of coins, the silver dollar and the $10 gold eagle, as neither of these denominations had been struck in about 30 years. Ironically, to not create an instant rarity by creating a silver dollar dated 1834, Mint officials went into their records to find out the last time that they struck coins. And they found out that in 1804, they in fact struck those 19,570 coins. However, what, what the records didn't tell them was that all of those coins were most likely dated 1803. On October 1st, 1835, Saeed bin Sultan of Muscat and Omen became the first person to own an 1804 dollar. In April 1836, King Rama III of Siam famously received his set, although two months later in June, unfortunately, Roberts died of dysentery in Macau. All of these coins struck in 1834 and 1835 are now known as Class I 1804 dollars. However, the story doesn't end there. By this time, numismatists in the United States had no idea that 1804 dollars had been struck this is true until 1842, when assayers at the U.S. Mint, Jacob R. Eckfeldt and William Dubois, published a manual of gold and silver coins of all nations. This book included a pantograph reproduction of the 1804 dollar. On May 9, 1843, Matthew Stickney famously traveled to the United States Mint to trade an immune Columbia coin in gold for an 1804 dollar. By the late 1850s, the United States was experiencing a surge in coin collecting. By this time, the mint had run out of 1804 dollars, but there was a supply of interested buyers. They quickly began to strike more. They were caught. This, this caused a giant uproar and a subsequent congressional inquiry. Needless, needless to say, this led to a halt in coin sales. During that time, Five coins were sold, only four were recovered, three were destroyed, and that last specimen was placed in the mint cabinet. These coins, struck in 1858 and 1859, are now known as Class II 1804 dollars. However, after the dust settled, the mint began to quietly sell more coins. The dyes existed until 1869 when they were officially destroyed, although coins were sold through the 1870s. These coins struck in the 1860s and 1870s are now known as Class III 1804 dollars. There are physical differences between Class I, Class II, and Class III dollars. 
the difference between class one and class two and three dollars are on the reverse. For class one dollars, the gap between the words states and of in the inscription, United States of America, is quite narrow. However, for class two and class three dollars, this gap is noticeably wider. Since class two and class three dollars share the same reverse die, the difference between those types of coins are found on the edge. For class two silver dollars, the edge is plain, while on class three dollars, the coins exhibit a lettered edge. Since 1804 dollars have been popular for so long, many counterfeit coins exist. In fact, there are more counterfeits than genuine coins. And there are two main methods that people used to counterfeit 1804 dollars. The first was to take a genuine coin of another date and change the last digit into a four. The second is to make a cast counterfeit. Both types are very common today. The ANS specimen of the 1804 dollar was unknown until 1893, when W. Julius Dreyfus of Alexandria, Virginia, purchased it for $100 from the son of a freed slave who claimed to have owned the coin for 40 plus years. Dreyfus, in turn, sold the coin to Isaac Rosenthal, a Philadelphia scrap iron dealer, to settle a $500 debt. The following year, Rosenthal sold the coin to Colonel James W. Ellsworth. By this time, the coin came with a letter of authenticity from Chief Engraver Charles Barber and Mint Cabinet Curator R. A. McClure. Superintendent Oliver C. Bosbyshell acted as agent for this sale. Ellsworth owned the coin for more than 30 years until 1923, when Waite Raymond and John Work Garrett purchased his entire collection intact. The following year, Raymond and Garrett sold the coin to Farron Zerby, with the, with the Guttag brothers serving as agents. This coin then joined Zerby's Monies of the World exhibit for about five years until 1929, when the entire exhibit went to the Chase Manhattan Bank Money Museum. There it sat for about 50 years until 1979, when the Bank Money Museum closed down and the entirety of the contents were supposed to go to the Smithsonian Institution. Fortunately, numismatist Eric P. Newman recognized that the Smithsonian already contained all three classes of 1804 dollars and didn't need a fourth example. He was able to secure the coin for donation to the American Numismatic Society in 1979. So why the 1804 dollar? This coin combines several different facets of American history. From early U.S. economic expansion into the Middle and Far East in the 1830s to, to the numismatic explosion as a hobby in the 1850s. The coin was at the center of a scandal of the U.S. Mint in the 1860s. Later became one of the first coins to sell for a million dollars at public auction. For years, it's been known as the king of American coins. Its rarity, beauty, and great story make this one of our greatest coins. This lecture has been made available to you courtesy of the American Numismatic Society. Since 1858, the ANS has supported research and education in numismatics and the history of money. With a collection of over 800,000 objects, an extensive library, a dynamic publishing arm, and ever-improving online research resources, we have become one of the largest numismatic institutions in the world. If you wish to support the ANS and the work we do, you can join as a member and become a part of this historic community. Go to numismatics.org membership to see options and prices.